Welcome back everyone. Well, let's get back into the garage. How's it going everybody? New year and a bunch of new projects, but before we can actually get any projects done, we've got to make it a little warmer in here because it is freezing. I'll tell you why. This is why. It's a very thin aluminum door and uh, there's also some more problems with that. I'll show you. So if you see that up there, there's a rather large gap between the garage door and the fascia or the op for the opening there of the garage. I'll show you why that is in a second here. We've also, we've also got some gappage underneath, so we gotta fix some of that draft that's coming in here. So here's a little insight as to why there's such a large gap. You see that huge crack there on the floor? Well, the garage floor over the years has settled, probably within the first five years after construction. And what that has created was the need to bring the garage door down even further to seal on the floor, except this corner over here is sunk more than the rest. And by moving the garage door down, it's created this huge gap up top. So all the draft from the outside, uh, wind and everything comes right in those gaps. This is east facing, so we get all the wind funneling right down our street. Well, the inside garage temperature is about a degree warmer than the outside air temperature, which is, uh, well, as you saw in the last video, it was minus 10 here. Now it's above zero, but still really cold. Can't do much work in here. I've got a lot of projects I want to start here. A lot of maintenance on some of the vehicles. So we'll have to fix the temperature in here because it's way too cold to do work. Okay, here's my plan. Here's what I picked up. I picked up four of these inch and a half thick Durofoam insulation sheets from Home Depot. They were about 26 bucks a piece. These are gonna go inside those panels on the door and insulate the door. The R value of these isn't really the highest. It's uh, 5.6, but better than nothing. That thin aluminum door is uh, really drafty, really cold. Um, and the other things I'm going to be doing around the threshold there or around that gap is I'm going to be installing some of this stuff here. So this is a garage door seal. I'll get one out of the package here. And it's uh, designed to go up against your fascia all the way around your garage door and then your garage door actually seals against this. And we'll show you how to install that. So here's an example how that fits up against the side. As you can see it'll seal nicely. This is paintable. Uh, so I can paint this the same color as my fascia, which is also another benefit here. Okay, and there's that gap right there. And with the fascia seal on, you can see that that gap is going to be gone. And that'll be sealed. Germany, foreign. Well, in the corners, we're going to have to put a little bevel in here, about a 45 degree bevel. So I'm going to show you how I do that. I'm going to put this in the workmate here. 
and cut that with my hacksaw. That does a bevel anyways. And you can see how the bevel fits nicely in the corner. Okay, so for this large gap here, I'm gonna end up taking a piece of one by one that I've got lying around. I'm just gonna cut it, I'm gonna paint it, and I'm gonna put it in there to fill the gap. Eventually, I'd like to jackhammer this floor and replace it. So this is just a temporary solution for now. And good enough, a little bit of paint on there and that'll be fine for now. So here's the painted piece to go uh, fill that gap. I've stapled a bit of plastic on the bottom or poly. Um, ultimately you'd want to put um, a bit of like a roofing shingle or something underneath there so it doesn't wick in water. But this is really just a sacrificial piece. Um, and the best idea would be really to replace this whole fascia or trim board here but we're not going to do that this is just a real budget repair and there it is installed the color pretty much matches we'll do the same to the other side and to ensure this doesn't want to take off on me here and as you can see it's snowing here again we're watching mr ups spin his tires all the way up the street you should have had snow and ice mode like the 1LE because I got up there a lot easier than that. I've got to move the entire operation indoors, which means the Camaro unfortunately has got to go out in the snow for a bit. Woo, she's a little grumpy. Well, there you are. You know I've been looking for you, don't you? Well, that's an oil leak. All good cars leak oil, right? So that's one that's been hard to find and it's been hard to track down. Um, but we're gonna go and get it on a lift one day and, and, and take a closer look. So I think that's the dipstick because it's not the pan and it seems to come down and, and run around the outside of the pan. But I've washed the pan down a few times. Haven't found any leaks from that area or from that pan gasket. So it's gotta be up top. And the only place I can guess is the dipstick tube o-ring or who knows look at all of this snow coming down you know a guy's gotta know will the z28 make it up the street in all this snow like the one le all right that's a bad idea get back to work and there you see we got that one side done and all the screws are in. It seals nicely against the door. So the only thing left then will be to put this little guy right here. And this side is done. So after working on the other side there, I realized that it's easier to do it with the door open. The edge of the seal or the inside of the seal lines up perfectly with the edge of the fascia or the trim. So this side I'm gonna do with the door open, just line everything up and then I'll see how door closes and see if the seal is in the right spot yeah work pretty good the seal is right where you want it to be okay well there's the seal all the way around 
So we've got that job done. No more draft. There's this little bit of a gap still underneath the door. So the only way to really fix that is to get some hydraulic and cement pumped in there to raise the height. But I don't know if I want to do that because there's that massive crack that went across the floor. So for now, we'll leave that. And uh, there's a few little tiny gaps in the corners here where my miters weren't perfect. But um, I'm going to stick a little bit of silicone in there, seal all that off. Maybe we'll paint this at some point in time, but it's way too cold to paint right now. So for now, this is good. We're gonna go inside. So next we're gonna put the insulation in here. And lucky for me, these are four foot wide panels. So I only have to make one cut. I'm going to be using the green side in and the silver foil side out. Tests have proven, or at least other YouTube videos have shown that it's better to have the silver side reflecting all the heat back into the garage and actually insulate the outside heat baking onto the door better if the silver side is also facing inside the garage. It's a long way to Tipperary. This stuff dulls exacto blades like crazy and leaves one heck of a mess. Okay, we got one panel more or less complete. We'll move on to the other ones and it'll just be a bunch of repeats so I won't bother filming that. Now when you get your cut right, which sometimes can take a few panels, goes in just like this. And quite a while later, we're left with this. So we've got the door insulated and one heck of a mess, which I'll clean up. And I'll show you the next step here because we're not done yet. And about six and a half hours later, the floor is clean. And I even have an extra sheet left. So around the tops of the doors where the windows are, I put some of these scrap pieces I had in here. Um, just what I had lying around left over. I didn't want to cut up that full sheet because I could use that for something else. But there's a little bit of movement here. They can move around a little bit. And if you look down here, these panels can move around a little bit. So what I'm going to do to fix that is use some of this aluminum tape. And I'm actually going to seal all these edges here. Uh, and it'll stop these panels from moving. This aluminum tape is usually used for HVAC ducting. It seals the joints and all the HVAC ducts. And it works really, really well. And sometimes when you're real lazy like me, you get these really bad cuts because you don't change the blade in your X-Acto knife. So the aluminum tape will also help hide this and make it look like you are a professional all the way through. And one more final thing that's good about the aluminum tape is if you actually come with something sharp and bump into your door and cut this aluminum backing here, the aluminum tape will cover and hide that. So this door will always look good for years to come. Easy patch repair. Well, here's how I apply the aluminum tape. First, pretty simple. Measure out how much you need. Get an approximate measurement. And then it'll cut with any type of scissors. It's really, really easy to cut. The tape has a, a paper backing on it, so you're gonna need to pull that off. And that's sometimes the hardest part of using this tape is trying to get that paper backing off. And once you get it going, just peel off, I'd say about six inches worth. Start it and make sure that six inches sticks. So you're gonna wanna really push quite a bit here and really push it down. And then from there, just peel it off about six inches at a time, smoothing it as you go. This ain't like pinstriping a car where you can kind of start it from one end, pull the tape all the way across. 
um, cause this stuff will want to go all over the place. It's really sticky. It likes to stick to itself as well. So you gotta be careful. Um, that's why I only take about six inches off at a time. And once you get it on there, then you really gotta go over it with your finger and smooth it right down. And you know you've got it smooth enough and you know you've done a good job when your finger at the end of the day is absolutely burning. And now because this is aluminum, the good part is you can curl it back ever so slightly and then continue to smooth the edge here by the door. And then once you've got that edge smooth, just like that, come back in, get it stuck to the door. A lot more smoothing, get those edges nice and smooth. And that's how it looks. There, once you get the top and the bottom sealed, no more jiggle in your panel. And it hides all your mistakes. It makes it look a lot better. Well, as you can see, the insulation project worked out really well. There's less draft coming through the door and less cold coming through the door. And the environment here is so much nicer to work in and just be in in general. So the total cost to do all this, all the materials was about 225 bucks, which is not bad. And that's Canadian. So for all you guys down in the States, that's like five bucks, isn't it? And that's the end of this video. So if you like what you see and you want to see more, Subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell so you will see my next video as soon as it comes out. And as for me, well, I'm going to plan my next project here and just relax and enjoy the environment. Oh, yeah. And have a couple more of these. Hey, babe, can you get me a refill?